Old Town Kayak Pedal Drive versus the Pelican Pedal Drive versus the Hobie Pedal Drive on today's versus video. I'm Zachary Fowler and you're watching my extra channel. And today we're gonna talk about which one of these is better, which one might be better for you. We don't have the Hobie on hand, but I did spend four days paddling through the Everglades with my wife. Uh, it was like two years, two winters ago now. And so I've had quite a bit of time on the water with that one. And recently Pelican just sent me one of their pedal drives in this spring and we've been using that a bit and Old Town also had me up to their factory and we saw one of these get built and we've been playing around with this a whole bunch. And I thought you guys probably want to know if you've been watching my videos like which one of these is better which one should you buy so let's get these things in the water see uh, which one tips over easier which one's faster which one's better for fishing which one's better for tripping and taking adventures on. And maybe we can answer the question for you, which one you might be interested in should you wanna buy one of these. So Pelican sent me this Catch 120 years ago and I've been running this thing forever and uh, I, this spring I was like, I want to, uh, well I need an upgrade because we've turned this into our work boat. I've always wanted the pedal one, seeing everybody out there with the pedaling. And after we took the Hobies out last year and uh, spent four days just pedaling through the Everglades, it was like, these things felt like they were indestructible and I had reached out to them and they never responded. So we ended up reaching out to Old Town. They had me come up to their facility. You can check out that video link below on my Fowler's Maker and Mischief channel where we watched them do a build on one of these and then we got these, took them out and did a great little video with them. And at the same time, Pelican got back to me and they're like, hey, we'd like to send you some of our high drive pedal ones. And I was like, but I just got a Old Town, but, but this looks really fun too. And you can never have too many boats, right? Never, 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 ever, ever. Never, never. So I said, send it. We will definitely have some fun with it, do some videos with it. And Pelican's been so nice over the years to send me whatever I had asked for. And I wanted to really try these out and give them a shout out. Since this kayak literally costs half as much as the Old Town and half as much as the Hobies. So obviously the biggest difference is these fins on the Hobies and on the Pelicans and the Old Towns having a propeller system, which means you can pedal just like a bicycle, which means you got forward and reverse on the Old Town, but with the Pelican, you only have forward. Fortunately, this thing turns pretty quick and that's not really a disadvantage. And with the Hobies, they have a lever on their pedal drive that you could pull and the fins allow you to reverse which is more of a pain in the neck than it's worth using. Let's talk about the boring stuff really quick. Boo! Boo! That's boring. Build-wise, this one costs twice as much. It's twice as thick. It's super solid. The same with the Hobies, except for the Hobies, I don't know if it was thicker or they just had more plastic to the whole thing because two people could barely lift it. It was a trailerable. The Outback, it, it really needed a trailer if you're not dragging it across the ground or willing to drag your really expensive tire across the ground. Whereas this one, it can be lifted with one person that doesn't have to be super duper strong or two people with like a pinky each on it to lift. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on you, you gotta take good care of it because the lightness of the build means you're more likely to ruin it if you start just dragging it in and out of the water but I like the lightness and the fact that you can move it by yourself and you can move it with a friend, even fully kitted out. Whereas the Old Town and the Hobie, you really gotta get all your stuff out of it before you move it, unless you got some really strong people and some wheels underneath of it. Layout wise, they're a little different. This has a little bungee cord area. Everything sits on top of the deck. Over here, you got a little storage unit. You could put three bodies in there. And in the storage unit, they even comes with a space for your battery to go in there so it stays off the bottom of the boat. And there's still room to tuck tents and sleeping bags back in there. And this one's always stayed super dry for me. Whereas the Pelican, they sent me a bunch of dry bags and I could put dry bags on here with my gear in it. Four rod holders on the Pelican and one forward one for rigging and two back ones and a big space back here for keeping your stuff in. Some dry bags and another lock space there that can uh, that stays really dry. The Old Town comes very nicely set up with a spot for your fish finder underneath of there that sets inside so it doesn't get banged up when you first drag it up onto the shore. The Pelican does not have that on the bottom. It does have a kind of a pontoony stabilizing shape where you can put your fish finder but you're still very likely to drag it across the rocks but I did it on my other one and it was sat in there very nicely. They both have a rudder with a little bungee for travel 
and you want to lock it in and they're both stable enough that if you forget this and you're already out in the water you can lean over your seat and turn around and unhook that and then pull your levers to drop it and you're good to go and it's not a problem. The Pelican has a little string system you pull on to drop your rudder and a little lock-in dog there and your rudder controls are worked by the handle on the side, on the left hand side. Old Town has a slightly nicer lever action and the handle is on again on the left. That is one thing I liked a little bit better about the Hobie, it did have controls on both sides. But so far I've gotten used to it having it on the left hand side for both of these and it feels pretty darn good. But one thing I really love about the Old Town is this little case right here. I'm able to store my extra pin in here if I knock one out. I can store my phone in here and this stays super dry and there's tons of little cubby space right in here for your stuff and even an under seat space. The Old Town really did a great job of making all kind of attachment points for somebody who's really into fishing you know, or filming even. Like I've been able to put my GoPro mount onto here. Uh, these little covers here could have other stuff attached to them, other screens with like forward facing radar. You get really carried away and it's all set up to be like done very easily without putting a bunch of holes in your boat. And these plates allow you to attach stuff and I got my fish finder here, I just don't keep it mounted on there all the time so it doesn't get stolen or something. And I really love the cup holder. Love the cup holder. That was something I always wanted to add to the Pelican from before and like I'd always put my coffee or something like that and we go out for an early morning fishing and I ended up knocking it over before half the morning was over and I only got to drink half of my coffee. Oh no, please, anything but that. And even the uh, Hobie, I don't believe that one had a, a cup holder. I had to buy a little bracket cup holders to go on it. He, he's a liar. You kind of get what you pay for, but Pelican still went all out and put four mounts for attaching your fish finders, things like that. There really isn't the thoughtfulness of wire chases and other spots to mount things. You can mount things here, but you're gonna have to mount them yourself and you know, make sure that it's sealed for water. Whereas those are mount plates on the deck that are uh, not part of the deck, so you're not letting water into the boat if you mount things to their mount plates. All right, let's get them out there on the water, see how quickly you can get it to pedaling and moving around, and then how stable they are. The paddle holder is really nice on this, it's so quick. That's kind of convenient. Now, putting the fins in, they drop in, put it in, boom, boom. Pull your lever, your rudder is down. Lock it in so it doesn't pop up on you. And I've already used this once, so it's adjusted. With this one, you adjust these. You can move these forward or backward depending on your leg length, and the seat always stays where it is. And you're off and away. Turn, the faster you're going, the better you're gonna be able to steer. Coming up on stuff, because you don't have a reverse, I'm gonna get 10 feet away, hard over. And then stop pedaling. And I peel out and manage to not run into the dock, and that's and I'm still like three or four feet from the dock, which is kind of nice. So 10 feet away, even six feet away at times, if you're not fighting wind, no problem. You could turn really easily. Unless you run into an unexpected shallows, this thing works pretty good. And when you put your feet like this, the fins are up and you can glide over in an unexpected shallow if you run into one. And if you have to, you pop out your paddle and take a stroke or two back and start back off again. Stability, easy stand up. I love the easy stand up in this and sit down. Being able to put your pole in the forward holder to work on stuff, setting it up, rigging it up, stand up, super stable. It, it uh, takes a bit to tip it over. You can go quite a ways over. Oh, I want to grab something. Oh, I dropped my, my sunglasses. Oh, but they float, but I need them. Oh, I got them. You go quite a ways over. I leaned pretty far over and obviously I fell out of it before the kayak flipped over and went with me, which is nice because you don't want your gear all getting dumped. Well, let's take it out a little ways and see what it's like getting into it when I can't touch the bottom. Not pretty, but it's actually not that bad and not very uncomfortable to get in. Cool, let's try the other one out. Popping the motor in. It's a little pull out and push down. Turn your latch and you're ready to go and you can adjust. This one you adjust your seat forward and back till it's the right length for you. 
and you're good to go. Oh, we gotta put our put our rudder down and she's in. And now we're off and away. Now assuming I didn't have reverse, I'll try that same 10 foot turning radius. 10 foot turning radius. And this one's got a faster turn for sure. But where this one excels is I can hammer right down on a location and then go full stop with just going backwards while I was still fishing. And also, I love this when I'm fishing sometimes. I'm standing up, this one's super stable as well. It feels really comfortable standing up, but sometimes when you're on a paddle kayak, you're like, you gotta get down, get your paddle, maneuver yourself. And even with the Hobies and all those other ones, they're really hard to operate when you're standing up. This one, if I'm getting too close to the weed bank, one stroke makes me start to pull back off, even when there's wind blowing me into it. And I can do that one-handed and then start casting again and working it and spot fishing. It's so nice. Stability wise, it feels like it rolls a little further side to side because of the shape of the hull, but that gives you more speed. Let's see about reaching out for your sunglasses. Oh, they fell over. Oh. They're over here. Oh. About the same thing. The boat doesn't want to go over on either of them. And you're going to fall out of your seat leaning over far enough to reach out and get something like that. I don't know why you wouldn't just paddle over. Let's see what it's like to get in when you're out there and you can't touch. There's a teeny bit less room between the paddle drives and the seat. Let's get in. Maybe not as easy, but doable. Very doable. So the old town's just a touch harder to get in. It's a little bigger. So that's a little stronger on the water, I think, when it comes to that aspect. Whereas the Pelican's a little lower. And it, I feel like it was like, we're talking, that's a 10 out of 10 for climbing into when you fall off of it. This is like a nine. You know, we don't have the Hobie right here, but like in the Everglades, I didn't ever fall out of it. And I reached over and got all kinds of sea creatures and things at different times, caught fish and then brought them into the boat. And I never felt like I was gonna tip. And there was waves that were throwing us all around insanely. And I feel like it's pretty much the exact same situation as the old town here. You could lean over until you fall out of your seat, but the boat won't flip and your stuff will stay safe. All right, let's get them both out on the water now. John will take this one, I'll take the Pelican, and we'll do a side-by-side uh, -side maneuverability, speed versus, and um, driving them through the weeds. You know, see how quickly they get fouled, which one handles the weeds better. I love these pedaling things, it's so fun. All right, head to head, speed wise, you ready? I think so. They're about there, about this match speed with me. And go. This is pretty comparative. Ah, the bird. Oh, are you going to the buoy? Huh? You're to going the to buoy? the buoy? You're to the buoy. Yeah. Are you really trying hard? Yeah. I oh, yeah. I think I just won. Definitely. That was not the result I was thinking would happen. That result actually surprised me. I thought uh, when I was out with Ralph and Chris the other day that that one was faster. And Chris caught up to me. I think, I don't know, maybe I wasn't fully going ex the full extension of my strokes. So that was, that was pretty interesting. Let's see, top speed. Sustainable cruising speed. I'm getting 3.3 .3 miles an hour. Now, top speed. 5.1. I'm very impressed. Good girl, Pelican. Keeps right up with the competition. All right, match me for speed. Ready? Yeah. Right, this one, we're gonna match for speed. You gotta go around the dock. Okay. Touch your nose straight on to that dock. Come around the dock, touch your nose straight onto that dock, and then back out and come around to be facing this way in about this position right here first. On your mark, get set, go. I have no choice but to be right up on you. I think my turning radius is slightly better. Yeah, I just 
grab onto yours and pull you backwards. So we're just kissing. Kissing the dog and then back it up and go around it again. Oh. Oh no. Getting the paddle out kind of had an advantage. Not even close. Pelican won that one, but if you had gotten your paddle out to slow down and then assist the turn really quick, I think uh, that would have gone better. If their tables were turned, I don't know. I'd say they're pretty comparable, except for I had to get my paddle out just to maneuver through that situation. All right, how about weeds? Let's see how they do going through the weeds. I can feel them catching on the, the, the high drive right now. But I'm still going forward. I don't know if it's clogging. Oh, something clogged me up for a second. All right, come back out of it. It's about 50 feet of weeds. Let's see. There is a piece of grass or a weed stuck to it. Pretty solid. I know they did have some issues with the high drive one, but they were they sent brand new ones out to people, and they've even sent some of the high drive twos. I think they still still fit in the same one when people had had trouble with the first ones and talked about it, like really nice, their customer service on that aspect from what I heard and seen people in other videos before they had sent these to me. And I know the Hobie, you know, it is so much stronger and bigger than this. It weighs a ton. It's a pain in the neck to maneuver around, pain in the neck to put into things, but it is super durable. And I, I don't know, I, this so far, I see that as pretty darn durable and I don't feel like you have to baby it or anything but obviously don't abuse it and like smash into the shore and then be miffed as to why you broke it but in reality when it comes to weeds I'll just put them up like this I'll cruise through with the paddle and then start working my way off and as far as the Hobie it's the same sort of system and when I was in Florida it did get clogged like once on weeds seaweed that was kind of a floating mat of seaweed and I ran into it I think this system would do the same and so would the PDL on the Old Town. Let's see how the Old Town handles the weeds. The weeds test, here we go. Can I paddle through it? Ugh, it's clogging. This is definitely not, like you'd kind of be dumb to be doing this. That's it, that's all I got, that's all she wrote. Out of the weeds, let's see what happened. Ooh. So that's what happens when you go into the weeds. Like, I mean, that was foolish. Like, you, you would you would put your pedals vertically so the propeller is vertical down below, and then you, you'd paddle if you had to go through a weed bank to get to, like, a clear spot that you're trying to fish. Or, or you'd even just, like, pop the thing up because it's so convenient to pop it up. Clears the weed pretty easily doesn't get clogged up in between the propeller and stuff like that. It's n not a big deal, but obviously that's where she she's not meant to drive like that. But with the reverse, there's no reason you should be in the weeds. You're going forward, you hit the weeds, whoop, whoop, whoop. Back it up, back it up, cast, keep fishing, keep having fun. I feel like noise-wise, these two are about the same. The Hobie makes a ton of noise. It's like clackety, clackety, clack. Go for it for a sec, John. Yeah, that's that. That's pretty whisper quiet. This is pretty darn quiet too. And I haven't noticed a difference in fishing wise, like they scare fish or anything. They're a lot less scary than a paddle sploosh splooshing. But we're talking minuscule amounts as far as that's concerned. Um, one thing I did notice is I feel like I could pedal this all day because the way the pedaling goes, and that is a little bit more of a workout which I kind of like, because I felt like sometimes when I'm cruising all the way down the lake that this isn't a workout at all. It's just, I'm like, I'm not doing anything. My Samsung watch here will actually pick up when I'm swimming or jogging or running or anything like that and be like, congratulations, you've been working out for five minutes. This thing, when you're using it, nothing happens when you're on that. Your heart rate goes up a little bit and it's like, you know you're burning calories and it's like, you're on the elliptical and you've been working out for 10 minutes. Good job, keep it up. You're burning this many calories. 
I get back from this and it says I haven't done a thing, I haven't put a step on my watch today and, and I might have gone six miles up the lake and back. The Old Town and the Hobie, I would go in the ocean for days and uh, I don't know about going on the outside of the ocean for a long period of time, we did we went with the Hobie and it, it did it. We went over all kinds of chop and all kinds of waves. It wasn't exactly comfortable but we were comfortable and felt safe in the boats and I feel like this one rides it out about the same. Um, that, you know, Pelican, I, I don't really feel like I'd want to go out in the ocean with that um, nearly as far or, or I'd want to be on the inside of anything, any islands, anything like that. And uh, I'd much rather be in this guy when it comes to that. Price wise, the Hobie is the most expensive and they have even more expensive versions with zero turns that you can turn a different lever or whatever and your, your little paddle feet turn around so you can spin on a dime and that's like a super duper fishing rig. But I feel like that one compared to this, I'd still rather have this one, the Old Town, than uh, the most expensive Hobie with the zero turn. If I was to pick my favorite, it would be really hard because I really love how light the catch is, 130, and for the price, I feel like they're a 10 out of 10. Like, for the quality, the lightness, the, the ease of use, and how well it works, I mean, it's 10 out of 10. But at the same time, if I start comparing this guy, I feel like if you're willing to spend twice as much, like, this is 10 out of 10, maybe even 11 out of 10, right? I don't know how that works, but but it is. Leaving out the Hobie and say we're comparing these two kayaks to some animals, I would say the Old Town is like a cheetah and the Pelican is like a hippopotamus. Super good in the water and super stable. Maybe that's a bad comparison. As kids, we never wanted to turn into a hippopotamus, but I think every one of us wanted to run like a cheetah. How about as cars? The Old Town's like my beautiful Subaru Cross Trek, super capable. When she's got the lift and all everything else on it, it can go anywhere, do anything. Whereas the Pelican's more like the 2008 Ford Escape I owned before alone. Still all wheel drive, still very capable, but not maybe quite as pimped out as the Subaru Crosstrek. So when it comes to price wise, building and all that stuff, I actually think I want to give the Hobie more of a, without doing it really mathematically good and making a nice chart of it. All right, I don't know if the animal and car comparison thing works out, Let's just make a chart. If we're to break down all three kayaks into seven categories and give them a rating of one to 10 for 10 being the best, it would look like this. Build quality, Old Town 10, Pelican 7, and Hobie 10. That's not quite fair though. So build quality for the price is still 10 for the Old Town, 11 for the Pelican, and nine for the Hobie. That makes up for the Pelican getting a seven in the solidness of its build quality because of its price being so low, it's kind of an 11 when it comes to how much you get out of it. Ease of use, 11 for the Old Town, 10 for the Pelican, and 9 for the Hobie. Moving it on land, 8 for the Old Town, 10 for the Pelican, and 5 for the Hobie. That thing was a beast. Fishability, Old Town wins that hands down. Stability-wise, they're all very similar. The Hobie was a little bit wider, I believe, and it might have been a touch more stable that way. Speed and speed per effort, Old Town's going to win this hands down with a 15 eight for the Pelican, and nine for the Hobie. And when it comes to fun, say totaling these all up, they're all very comparable and they'll have good pluses and minuses. Old Town, I'm gonna give it an A plus. Pelican, you're gonna get an A. And Hobie, I'm actually gonna give you an A minus. They're still all A's, but not all A's are the same. So I don't know if I really answered the question of which one's the best one to buy outside of showing you all their features and now you have to decide like which one's the best one for you. If you're on a budget and you are planning on spending a certain amount, but you wanna get fully kitted out and really be out there with your fish finder and you know mounts for your extra fishing poles for trolling and things like that, you're probably gonna to wanna to go with the Pelican. You'll love it and uh, you just gotta be a little more gentle with it as far as dragging it in and out of the water, across the rocks, things like that. Otherwise, the water could never damage either of these and they would last you forever and you'd be all fine as long as you took care of it and you don't just leave it out in the sun and to get damaged and under a pine tree to get pitch all over it. They're, they're pretty solid. But you're paying for that quality, which I'd say is totally worth it. So for myself, I don't think I'll ever go back to a Hobie again. I love the old town. I love the pedal drive and I know that they got some more special stuff they were showing me when I was there that you guys are gonna love when that comes out that makes this thing even more baller. And the Pelican, I'm gonna have that. And when it comes to like dropping it into a pond where you gotta drag it through the woods and I wanna kit it fully out and then throw some wheels underneath of it, I'm probably gonna take that one over this guy 
because well, I've dragged this off in the woods before and it's a pain in the neck, but it was really nice to have it there. I'm probably gonna get a trailer for this one and then stack this one in the truck with two of these um, Pelicans when I want to. I'll just throw those in the back of the truck and go with it if I don't feel like trailering. And that'll be my go-to for that. And when we're down here on the lake, it'll just be a matter of what I'm feeling like that day, whether I take this one or that one. If I wanna go all the way up the lake and I'm gonna do a long distance and I'm gonna be out for an entire day, I'm probably gonna take this guy if I really wanna get into the weeds and it's calm and I'm gonna bump up some fish close to home, I'm probably gonna grab that one. So I hope that's helped you and hasn't brought more questions on and thank you so much once again, Old Town, for setting me up with this. We love it and I can't wait to get out striper fishing on it. And Pelican, thank you so much for sending us those. We're gonna have those and uh, be doing all kinds of fun stuff off of these kayaks for years to come. And everybody that comes down to the land is gonna have a great time trying these out and playing around on them and just enjoying being out on the water. And I hope you do too. We'll see you guys in the next one. Fowler out. One more time, one more race now that we're switched up, right? And I got the old town. All the way around the dock and then to the dock, around the floating dock into the dock. Left or right side of the floater? Uh, inside mm -hmm. and then around the outside. Ready? Okay. Set, go. Oh, he's spinning me out. Oh. Oh, he's going. He spun me out. I grabbed onto him. Oh, this turns too wide. Oh. First one into shore and unloaded, I guess. I think I got this one. Oh, a couple weeds on that last run. Hey, what took you so long? <laughs> I don't think I, think I thought you had me when you spun me out by hitting the rear end, but it's either a strength thing or a skill thing or both. I don't know. Well, but. I pushed you behind me and then you spun me out, but I was able to recover from that quicker.